When you consider our relationship to the Earth, you most likely think of us as living on the outside surface of the planet. In some respects, this is an accurate description, but it is not the only way to think about our place. We do live on the solid surface, but we also live at the bottom of a giant ocean of gas, an ocean that we call the atmosphere. The atmosphere contains a mixture of different gases, with water vapor and dust particles. The most abundant gas in the atmosphere is nitrogen, which makes up over 78% of the total. Oxygen is the next most abundant gas at about 21%, followed by argon at a little less than 1%. Together, these three gases account for more than 99.9% .9 of the gas in the atmosphere. All the other components, called trace gases, combine to account for less than 0.05% of the total. These trace gases are a mixture of many different compounds with the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide, having a concentration of about 0.04%, making up more than 90% of the total. Hydrogen, methane, ozone, and a mixture of noble gases account for most of the rest. There is also water and water vapor present. Water is treated separately because while the proportion of nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and all of the trace gases are relatively stable, the amount of water present varies significantly over space and time, with concentrations ranging from near zero in some regions to as high as 4% in others. The gas in the atmosphere has mass and is drawn towards the Earth by gravity. It is the pull of gravity on all of these particles that create atmospheric pressure. At sea level, atmospheric pressure is about 10 newtons of force per square centimeter. In U.S. units, this is just over 14 and a half pounds per square inch. Meaning, as we walk around, there is over 14 pounds of matter weighing down on every square inch of our head and shoulders. Atmospheric pressure varies. The exact value is determined by elevation, temperature, the combination of gases overhead, and their vertical distribution. Warm wet air is lighter than cool dry air, which is why barometers suggest that low pressure means stormy weather, and a drop in barometric pressure is often a leading indicator of rain. Due to the rotation of the Earth, the atmosphere is thickest near the equator and gets thinner towards the poles. It is a layered structure. The bottommost layer, called the troposphere, varies in height from about 8 kilometers at the poles to about 16 kilometers around the equator. This is the densest region of the atmosphere and is the layer where weather occurs. Density of gas in the atmosphere decreases rapidly with altitude, and so does atmospheric pressure. 50% of all the gas in the atmosphere is held within the lowest 5.5 kilometers. 75% is within the lowest 11 kilometers, and over 90% within the first 20 kilometers. Concentration and pressure decreases rapidly above 20 kilometers, and while the concentration of gas is extremely thin in the upper atmosphere, the gas present is still considered part of the atmosphere because it is gravitationally locked to the planet. Gas in the upper atmosphere filters out damaging high-energy electromagnetic energy by reflecting it back into space or absorbing it. If the atmosphere did not filter out this energy and it reached the ground, it would make the surface of the Earth inhospitable to life as we know it. Most of the energy from the sun that does reach the ground is absorbed and then re-radiates back into the atmosphere. This energy, radiated to the atmosphere from the ground, is what warms the lower atmosphere, maintaining a climate conducive to life. The flow of this energy through the atmosphere drive currents we call wind and is responsible for weather, different weather patterns around the world. When we learn about the composition of the Earth's atmosphere, attention is often paid to the fact that we would not be able to survive without the oxygen that is present at such high concentrations. We also learn that plants are the source of this oxygen. These two facts point to an interesting relationship. Life creates the atmospheric conditions required for life to exist. In fact, the presence of such a high concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere along with a low concentration of carbon dioxide, is unusual enough that if an alien explorer were to look at the planets in the solar system from a distance, they would see that the outer gas giants had atmospheres dominated by hydrogen, while two of the inner planets, Mars and Venus, had atmospheres dominated by carbon dioxide and contain almost no free oxygen. This is not a surprise because oxygen is very reactive, so concentration should be low unless there is a process that continually produces more. This makes Earth, with its atmospheric oxygen concentration of over 20% and almost no carbon dioxide, stand out as a place where something unusual is happening, and would probably be interpreted as evidence for the existence of life here.
In fact, prior to the evolution of oxygen producing photosynthesis, Earth's atmosphere looked much more like those of our neighboring planets, with a much higher concentration of carbon dioxide and almost no free oxygen. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment with any questions or suggestions, and if you want to keep up with the content here at Science Primer, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.